Well, hello. My name is David Andalfato. I'm with the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis here at the 39th Annual Fall Conference. And I'm speaking here with uh, Professor Gianluca Violante of New York University, who will be presenting a paper, or has just presented a paper with the title, What Shifts the Beverage Curve, Recruitment Effort and Financial Shocks. So I thought you gave a very nice presentation there, Gianluca. Would you like you, mind? Uh, actually, why don't you start off by just uh, explaining to people what, what the beverage curve is and like why anybody should care about it? Yes. So uh, the beverage curve is uh, the empirical relationship between the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate. So the unemployment rate is the fraction of uh, 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 individuals in the labor force who look for jobs. And the vacancy rate is, uh, loosely speaking, uh, the fraction of uh, uh, idle positions, of open positions uh, in the economy. And uh, <clears throat> obviously in an ideal world, in a world uh, without frictions, and uh, in, uh, for example in our competitive models, they are both zero. Uh, both the vacancy rate and the unemployment rate are zero because there is uh, market clearing in the labor market. Uh, in the data, it is not the case, and in a large class of uh, 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 frictional labor market models, this is not the case, meaning that uh, unemployment and vacancies coexist in equilibrium. Um, now, uh, typically, uh, in the data, there is a negative correlation between unemployment and vacancies. Um, for example, in an expansion, uh, firms uh, post more vacancies, so the vacancy rate goes up and uh, workers find jobs at a faster rate, so the unemployment rate goes down. So this uh, uh, generates a negative correlation over the business cycle between uh, unemployment and, and vacancies. So in general, the beverage curve, this empirical relationship, is negatively sloped, as a negative slope. Now, in the data, every once in a while, uh, this correlation changes sign and becomes positive, meaning that we see uh, for short periods or long periods, depending on, on, on uh, uh, the, uh, the date and the country we look at, that unemployment and vacancies are positively correlated. So this means that, um, for example, uh, uh, there is uh, in the data an increase in, unemployment in the unemployment rate and at the same time an increase in the vacancy rate. Okay? So this is a sign that uh, there is a deterioration in the way the labor market works because the fundamental role of the labor market is that of putting together uh, idle jobs and idle workers. And if uh, they both increase at the same time, it means that uh, uh, there is a, a decline in what we call aggregate matching efficiency. So the efficiency, the effectiveness of the labor market in combining uh, unemployed workers, job seekers and uh, idle positions. Now, after the Great Recession, after the 2007-2008 recession, we did observe one, uh, in fact, especially significant instance of uh, a, a positive uh, movement between unemployment and vacancies. That is what, uh, in the literature, we call a shift in the beverage curve. Uh, for example, before the recession, an unemployment rate of uh, around 7% was associated to a vacancy rate of, uh, say, 2%. Uh, after the recession, the same unemployment rate of 7% is associated to a vacancy rate of 3%. So there are more uh, unemployment and more vacancies that coexist together in the labor market. Is this, <coughs> a, is this a common phenomenon during recessions for this beverage curve uh, to shift or for this efficiency of the matching process to deteriorate? Or is it something that's kind of special that, uh, uh, with respect to the last recession? Well, um, Unfortunately, the quality of the data uh, before, uh, say, 2001 is not as good as after 2001. So it's difficult okay. to, to make like a, a, a sort of a historical uh, statement about uh, uh, this. That, that, that's a great question. Uh, in, if we compare to the 2001 recession with 2008 recession, for which you have good data and the same sort of data, comparable data, then in the Great Recession, there was an exceptionally large shift in the beverage curve. Okay, so so what is, what is the question or the set of questions you're interested in pursuing in light of the, the facts of uh, what the beverage curve is and how it's behaved? Well, we are, um, in this paper, um, we are trying to understand uh, what are the sources of the, uh, the observed shift in, the, in this beverage curve or the decline in uh, uh, aggregate matching efficiency. And uh, um, we uh, uh, have in mind a mechanism that is based on an interaction between 
uh, recruiting intensity on the firm side and uh, financial shocks. Okay? So essentially the idea, the idea is very simple. Um, so uh, the mechanism is based on uh, three observations. The first observation is that uh, the, the job filling rate, meaning the rate at which um, firms fill vacancies, we know from the data that is increasing in the firm's growth rate. Okay? So the firms that grow fast uh, are the ones that recruit with the highest intensity. They're the ones that they post their vacancies and then they, they spend a lot of resources, say advertisement, networking, uh, screening, in order to get the workers fast. That's, that's the first fact. The second fact is that um, it's the young firms that uh, have the highest growth rate and they contribute disproportionately to job creation. So, for example, 20% of total job creation is due just to startups, mm. okay? And uh, almost half of job creation is concentrated in firms that are, uh, you know, younger than seven or eight years old. So a lot of the job creation is in the young firms, and these, are, and these are the firms that grow the fastest, and these are the firms that have the highest degree of recruiting intensity. Now, the Great Recession, as uh, uh, has been characterized by uh, a financial uh, shock, sure. and this financial shock had a disproportionate effect on young firms. Mm. Okay? To give you an example, we know that you know, housing equity has fallen dramatically in the, uh, in the, in the Great Recession, and uh, actually housing equity is a key source of financing for startups, for small startups. So young, young and, and, and uh, you know, entrepreneurs, what they do, often they take basically a second mortgage on their house uh, in order to finance the, uh, the startup, the, the beginning of their, of their enterprise. And uh, uh, this financial shock, this inability of doing that in a great recession has reduced uh, the ability to create new young firms, new firms, young firms, and those are the firms that really, that, that essentially recruit with the highest intensity. So how, do they, how does that translate into um, uh, a fall in matching efficiency or a, uh, a shift to the beverage curve? Basically what it means is that even if we, we, we do see a lot of vacancies in the data, but these vacancies are not associated with the high recruiting intensity. So firms post a lot of vacancies, they create vacancies, but they, they don't recruit with, with high effort. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, it's possible that we see high vacancy rate and high unemployment rate because the vacancies are not really looking hard for the workers. I see. Uh, so it's really a composition effect of sorts. Um, are you aware of, so this is one interpretation of the so-called shift in the beverage curve. Yes. I mean, I suppose there's other interpretations as well. Yes. I mean, uh, how, how does yours compare with, say, some prominent explanations? And, and what's the, what are the key uh, strengths uh, of yours versus these more conventional explanations? Well, I think one, one another um, uh, prominent or certain uh, plausible explanation of the shift in the beverage curve is uh, uh, an increase in mismatch, occupational and geographical mismatch right. between unemployment and, and vacancies. Okay, so essentially the idea is that um, uh, the idea is that uh, after, the, after the recession, the recession hit mostly to the construction sector and manufacturing sector, and there were other sectors uh, like, for example, um, uh, healthcare that actually kept growing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, um, so after the recession, what happens essentially is that you have uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, workers that are fired from uh, the construction and manufacturing sectors, but the vacancies are in different sectors. Okay? That means that there is a misallocation of mismatch between unemployment and vacancies, and that can, again, contribute for this coexistence of a high vacancy rate and yes. a high unemployment so rate. So basically a structural disturbance that makes matching across sectors more difficult than, yes. than within a sector. So um, this is something that we, yeah. Go so what, what, are, what would be wrong with that interpretation and why, why would one, I mean, I guess suppose oh, they could be both exactly. complementary. So I think, I mean, so, so I, I, I worked on the measurement of, uh, of, uh, of mismatch mm -hmm. uh, in a separate paper uh, and we did conclude that uh, that mechanism can explain at most, uh, I would say, between one quarter and one third of the drop in aggregation okay. efficiency. So there is scope for other explanation and this is one of the reasons why we started working on, on, okay, this, on this paper. 
So in terms of, uh, you know, there's a lot of people working on this issue, the beverage curve, yes. uh, why it's moving around, how to interpret it. Uh, what is your view about, I mean, what, what motivates your research in terms of, uh, do you think, uh, in terms of what potential policy lessons might come out of this? Uh, I mean, this is the labor market. It re relates to unemployment. And yes. Do you, do you think uh, your research might at, at some point bear on some labor market policies? Um, well, uh, certainly we are still at a very preliminary um, uh, stage of the project, uh, so I want to be very cautious in terms of uh, uh, you know, possible policy recommendations, obviously. But I would say that th the reason why what we do is interesting from a policy perspective is that there has been a, um, uh, a great emphasis, I think, and for the right reasons, in uh, trying to understand what the effect of the extension, the generous extension of unemployment benefits um, uh, uh, was on uh, worker search effort uh, and the, uh, the intensity uh, of, uh, uh, search, of search from the unemployed, from the job seeker side, basically. So there was a lot of focus on the job seeker side with the idea that as if we're you know, if we if we are extending uh, uh, unemployment benefits for too long, if the unemployment benefits are too generous, there's a disincentive effect on the unemployed, and that can actually um, uh, prolong the, 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 the recession. Well, we're shifting the focus a little bit towards the firms. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we're saying, well, it's possible that it's the firms actually that are they're reducing their recruiting intensity, their, their 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 search effort, and the reason is that this recession has been especially um, detrimental for young firms. So if you uh, want a fast recovery, perhaps you should somehow, maybe that's one possible, uh, you know, with all the caveats, uh, prescri uh, policy prescription, you should try to actually foster job creation. And fostering job creation, that's another point that uh, I think Altiwanger makes very clearly in a number of uh, academic and policy pieces. Mm. It doesn't mean helping small firms, okay? Because there's a big distinction between young firms and small firms. Uh, there are a lot of small firms that are not young, that don't have any growth potential. I think about the drug stores mm. around the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are the optimal size. It's not like they need mm -hmm. to grow. But uh, there are many young firms that are small, and those are the ones that, that need to be targeted. Of course, it's very hard because we know there is many young firms, uh, you know, they are born, they, they start well, and then, you know, they close shop after a few months because things go wrong. So it's very hard to target, even, even among the young firms, which ones are uh, the ones that have gross potential. And that's really an important challenge for policy. Right. The challenge, I guess, would be for policy to actually identify which, which small for firms. Precise. I mean, there's a lot of people and firms that would like, uh, I guess, um, credit, credit extension, not public credit uh, yes. a policy, or even wage subsidy, I suppose, could potentially work. Yes. But, um, or hiring subsidies. Yeah. Hiring subsidies. Yes. Does your, your 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 paper would speak to more a direct credit in, credit market intervention, I suppose. Well, um, uh, these I, are financial frictions that yes. are holding them back. In yes. Any yes. Yes. Our our paper, uh, our paper, uh, the con one of the conclusions of our paper is that these financial frictions were especially uh, uh, especially sharp in the. Uh, in the recession, and so easing that friction would have would have helped. But but once again, this is well. Is there a, a takeaway for the audience? Uh, can you give us summarize your your the key uh, lessons from your research, or what you hope to learn, just in a, in a few sentences? Well, really, what what so what we hope to learn is um, uh, whether the recruiting intensity uh, uh, channel, so the, the the search intensity on the firm side. Uh, can play an important role in uh, uh, business cycle fluctuations. Uh, and this is something that uh, has not been emphasized enough in our, uh, in our view, um, with one notable exception, which is uh, the paper by David Saltiwanger and Faberman that inspired right. our work. All right, so in the search market, there's uh, workers and firms, and we and policymakers should think about both of them operating together. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Gianluca. That was very informative. Thank you, David.